This video will show you how I redesigned CodeStacker's official website for his new course. The first thing I did was start sketching out a general idea of what I wanted the website to have. Since I like drawing, I decided to sketch out the wireframe on a notepad, including all the main sections. Jesse wanted his website only to have a single page, but one of those ones where you can continue to scroll through. So I decided to map it out in different sections. This is just a low fidelity mock-up. Realistically, I'm just using icons and lines to represent text and later I'll fill these out with proper content. But for the time being, this gives me a general idea of the layout. Right now, I'm not too worried about the user interface. I've drawn out the main sections, such as a pricing table, testimonials, and lots of examples. I like to do this part quite quickly. It only takes me an hour or so, and after that, I get a good idea of the general website, as well as how I'm going to sketch this out later on Figma. With my sketching done, I always still like to map out the design one more time on my iPad with a slightly higher fidelity version. With this all done, I'm just about ready to create the high fidelity version. This is the mockup I created on my iPad, which I can copy across to my computer, and it's pretty much exactly the same as the one that I sketched up originally. Now the fun begins. I'm going to open up Figma, and I'm going to create this high fidelity version of the mockup. I create the high fidelity version by continuously iterating through different design elements and pulling inspiration from sites like Dribbble. I usually have an idea of how I want the design to look, but on top of that, when I have moments of inspiration, I just throw them in as well. When redesigning a website, we'll often have text that we could copy across, but often I like to rephrase this so it makes more sense with the overall design. I take the user design of my buttons very seriously. Here I've created an orange design with white text and I made the background of the colors here a little bit darker so that that white text can stand out. I finished with the hero section. I decided to go with a strong blue very similar to VS Code, as well as an orange that is similar to the logo of CodeStacker. For the menu, I kept it simple but made the active item darker. I also made key elements bolded as well as underlined so that they stand out more on the page. The next three items were call to actions as to why someone would want to buy the course. In this case, it helps you code faster, more efficiently, and has a community. I kept these simple with some text and color as well as a small icon. The next few sections expanded more on these call to actions. In this example, I showed how keyboard shortcuts could help you code faster. I also use visual items such as arrows and colors to draw attention as well as get people to click on that button to get the course. I want to move on to the next part, which will showcase some of the features. What's included will have a table of contents of the features of this course, but on top of that we'll go into further depth with nice images and descriptions for each one of these. These are some of the images from the ebook as well as the course itself with a description and a call to action that says that a person should try it out by getting a free chapter below. 
The other main feature that this course comes with is the 8D video, so I've decided to make this stand out with a nice big piece of text as well as a call to action here to download a sample, as well as a quick preview button where people can click on the screen and get an example of what that might look like. And here is the design for this section. What I've done here is created a transition from the hero section above it to this section here. I've used strong oranges and I've had clear call to actions with arrows pointing to the buttons I want users to click to. Then I repeat this section with alternating views for each one of the examples. I built up quite a few so that Jesse can later decide what he wants to include and what he doesn't. Now it's time for the next section, which is the pricing table. The design of the pricing table is very similar to what it was before, but it decided to clean it up a little bit with more indentation as well as better colors and buttons to make it clean and stand out. This section is almost done. I'll just fix up the colors a little bit so that they're using the VS Code colors as well as the Code Stacker colors. Then moving on, I want to create a testimonial section where I can give some feedback of what other people are saying about this course. And here is the pricing table design that I've put together. The UI of this uses a lot of glass morphism and I've added a few gradients in the background so it feels like it has this subtle glow. I've grouped all the features and spaced them evenly and added a nice large button for people to click on when they want to check out. I applied the same logic to the testimonials, having a very large quote from a single sentence that people can read. And on the right hand side, I put the person who made that testimonial, their avatar as well as the company and the full context of that testimonial. This website is now live. Codestacker loved it. You can check it out in the link below. On top of that, I've actually put together a design course over the last two years. This is everything that I know in terms of color theory, topography, component design, and much more. It's hundreds of pages of course material, as well as video tutorials on everything that I've learned over the last decade. If you want to have access to that, and if you want to have a discount, I'm launching it very soon, and you can check it out as well in the link below. Otherwise, don't forget to like the video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.